Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to understand the read and write operation in a 3 transistor DRAM cell. This is a very interesting concept and we'll quickly understand how does read and write happens in a 3 transistor DRAM cell. Let's first see the basic diagram. When you see a lot of transistors on the screen, you tend to get confused. The diagram is very straightforward. I'll explain you here. We have already studied in SRAM that there is something called as a pre-charge circuit where there are two PMOSs connected back to back. And if I give an input phi and both their inputs are shorted when phi is equal to zero, both this PMOS will turn on and it will charge my output lines to a value VDD and there in SRAM we call this as bit and bit bar. Right now let's not get into the naming conventions. The thing which we need to understand is in 3 transistor DRAM also we have a pre-charge circuits or pre-charge device. Here I have not used PMOSs. I have used two NMOSs connected back to back with a phi going as the input and VDD. We know that NMOS is not good at producing a perfect one but here it will still produce an output which will be greater than the logic value which can be interpreted as a logic zero. So the value would be interpreted as logic high. So you don't need to worry about that. We can use a PMOS pre-chart device also but for understanding here I have kept all NMOSes. So this completes this level of my diagram. Now this is the second level of my diagram which is very very simple again. You need to understand that you need to draw two transistors upside down. This is transistor one of them and this is the other one. This will have the input as words, uh, this will have the input as write select and or write enable and this will have the input as read select or read enable and the output of this will go to another transistor which has one input connected to this transistor and the other input connected to ground and we know that ideally the capacitors are present at the output of pass transistor at the input of an NMOS as well. So this is that capacitor. This is going to be the king capacitor because this will help us in doing the reading and the writing operation. And now the final thing which is left out in the circuit is to connect the two hanging lines. So this is nothing but going to be connected to my pre-charge devices output. So basically one of them is connected to X, the other one is connected to Y and this is nothing but my three transistor DRAM circuit where at the output I've also drawn the capacitors on this line. So if you see pre-charge X from there I went on and drew this transistor M2. This is that capacitor and this is connected to the input of this which is again connected to this transistor. This is nothing but my read select line or read enable. This is nothing but my write select line or write enable. And just one additional circuitry which we have connected like we connected the write circuitry in SRAM. This goes down and it's connected to data bar and this input is nothing but data in whereas this will be straight away taken in and data out. This is just a representation. So what you need to remember is the pre-charge device is very straightforward. The three transistor DRAM circuit where connect two transistors upside down with one input as write enable other input as read enable. From one of the transistors connect that one of the terminals to the gate of the another one and in between the two connect the capacitor and this transistor will have one foot as down and the other foot connected to the other upside transistor and just make the connections of the capacitor. This is nothing but the diagram of a three transistor DRAM cell where this is going to be my king capacitor as I mentioned because this will help us in doing the reading or the writing operation. These two are just going to act as mere switches. Also if you see in the diagram C2 and C3 are the capacitors which are connected to this line. Technically in real time there will be a lot of such three transistor DRAM cells which will be connected to this lines right. So all this will have a lot of capacitance which will be connected in parallel and when capacitance are connected in parallel it gets added up we know that. So C2 will have a very large value so would be C3 if you have not followed this it's okay just remember that C2 and C3 have large values compared to C1 which I have just written here and this is how my circuit looks. Now let's get started with one one operation and let's see what's going to happen. So first I'm going to try a write one operation. So remember before we do a write one or a read one, a write zero or a read zero, before every cycle I'll make my PC equal to one. PC is nothing but my pre-charge signal which is also called as phi and when that goes to one my P2 and P3 which are NMOS transistors will turn on and it will charge my C2 and C3 to VDD. Just keep this in mind close to VDD approximately. Now for write one operation let's see this is the first step which is going to be common for all the other operations also which we see. The second step we want to write a one at this transistor node C1. Just very simple. 
just see what's going to happen. Don't get confused with the diagram. So make your data bar because you want to write a one, make your data bar equal to zero, exactly opposite to what you want to write. You should give to your data bar. Now tell me if data bar is zero, that means this transistor is off. Fair enough. C2 is already charged to VDD, correct? M2, because we are doing a write operation, do you all agree that write select or write enable is going to be high and read select or read enable is going to be zero? So this read select is zero, that means M3 transistor is off from my circuit. M1 transistor does not have a logic value high, so this is also off from my circuit. Read signal is high, so M2 is on. So this is how my circuit is reduced to M2 being on because this is nothing but my write select as one terminal towards C2, which is already charged to VDD. Another terminal is towards C1, which has an initial value of zero. And this is nothing but a simple concept of charge sharing, where we already know that, suppose there are two buckets, we have already seen this of water, where one is at the higher level and other one is at the lower level. And if there is a path between the two of them, the higher one will lose its water, the lower one will gain the water till they both reach equilibrium. So charge sharing will take place here. C2 will go down with respect to its voltage and C1 will go up and will go up such that it crosses. Suppose if this is the range of zero to VDD and zero to 0.9 is presumed to be as logic zero and 0.9 and above is presumed to be logic one and it will cross the 0.9 level. So now it will be correctly interpreted as logic high. So I've written my one. What we did was we'll see whether the one is written when we read this one. What we did was nothing but ensure that my C2 and C3 is charged to VDD. And then we just made our write signal high. And then we saw which transistors were on. We saw that M2 was on, the other two were off. This was off because there was no gate positive voltage. And this was off because it reads right read signal was zero. And we saw the concept of charge sharing due to which C1 raises its value. And hence a one is written in this case. Now let's go ahead and read this one. So again, for reading also, first we'll make our PC equal to one. That means my C2 and C3 is charged to VDD. Remember that. Now C1 is also presumed to have a higher logic value because we have just written that and we want to read this logic one. So tell me we want to read. So write select is going to be zero read select is going to be one so write select being zero that means m2 transistor would be off read select being one that means m3 is on at the same time because one was written on c1 logic one that means one is given to this transistor as well so m1 is also on so technically this is my circuit now m1 which is on because logic one due to c1 was present this is my m3 transistor which is also on and at the foot of it is c3 which is charged to VDD. So now this is nothing but a closed switch. This is nothing but a closed switch. So basically my C3 gets a path to discharge through M3 and M1 transistors and C3 will go to a value lower than VDD and towards zero. And if we put our output probe here, we will see that whenever a one is written at C1, this column or it's called a data outline, data outline will go towards zero. So if data outline will go, will be tending towards zero or is equal to zero, that means a one is written at C1. And we have already written that one and now we have seen how we have read that one also. Simple steps what we did was we made our PC1. So my C2 and C3 were again charged to VDD. We made because we wanted to read. So read signal equal to one, write signal equal to zero. That means M2 transistor was off. M1 would be on because initially the one was written and now C3 got a part to discharge through M3 and M2. And because this got discharged, the final falling column voltage or the voltage on data out, which was falling is interpreted by another data circuitry that a logic one is stored at C1. Very simple. Now let's quickly go ahead and do a write zero operation. So now it's very, very simple. Write zero, make your PC equal to one. That means C2 and C3 equal to VDD. Now we know that C1 is discharged to zero as we saw in the previous clip or in the previous slide. So that means M1 is off. Again, we want to write. So write signal one, read signal zero. That means M3 is off and M2 is on. So now what's happening is M2 is on. I beg your pardon. Here I have made an error. C3, sorry, in the previous clip, C1 is not discharged. It was C3 which was going down to zero, but we made it VDD by making PC1. So C1 was at a logic value equal to VDD or a logic value one. 
correct and now this is what the circuit looks like so c2 which is equal to vdd it has another capacitor c1 which is also equal to vdd but if you see properly correct what's happening here is this terminal is also connected to another transistor which is nothing but data bar and because we want to write a zero that means data bar is going to be equal to one so when data bar is equal to one this nmos transistor would be on so now what's going to happen is your c2 transistor and this m2 is also on so basically this is a short circuit it's a closed switch and this is also a closed switch so what's happening is your c2 and your c1 is getting a path through this transistor is getting a path through let's call this transistor as n nx just for reference is getting a path through nx to discharge to zero so now i have discharged c1 to zero that means now i have written a zero at c1 which was my idea i wanted to write a zero which i have already done now let's see whether the zero is written or not we need to see whether this is read or not correct so let's see that so let's read this again first pc equal to 1 so c2 and c3 equal to vdd we know that we have discharged c1 to 0 so this is 0 that means m1 is off read select is 1 write select is 0 because we want to read this 0 that means m2 is also off read select is 1 so m3 is on so this is how my circuit looks like on there is no path here and there is a capacitor correct now what's going to happen in this case is c3 does not get a path to discharge and the logic level high is kept on data out as we said in the previous operation when data one was falling or data out was going towards zero that means we had a one written on c1 now this value on data out is not falling towards zero it's staying at a logic value one because it has no part to discharge and this is interpreted by the data read circuitry there's another circuitry called data read circuitry as a zero which is stored on c1 so this is what i have done i have read the zero which was written on c1 in summary it's a very straightforward process we'll see everything together on one waveform if you have followed fantastic if you have still not followed in one waveform you will follow everything let's quickly go ahead and do this operations on one waveform together so this is how the waveform looks like let's quickly go ahead and investigate this initially my pc is one i'm going into this column correct so c2 c3 both charge to vdd because p2 on p3 on and they will charge c2 and c3 to vdd so that is all what i'm doing in this cycle at that point of time word select is zero read select is zero whatever is stored and all that is all dummy right now in the first cycle now what i do is i want to write a one so what do I do? I first make my PC equal to zero. Fair enough. And then I make my word select equal to one. When I make my word select equal to one, in this case, what I see is my M3, sorry, my M2 turns on. At the same time, my read select is zero. That means my M3 is off. Everyone is with me. M3 is off. M2 is on. And at the same time, because I want to write a one, that means my data bar is going to be equal to zero so see if that makes sense yes data bar is equal to zero because data bar is equal to zero data in cannot discharge so it will stay to a value which is equal to high so data because this was pre-charged so data in is equal to one correct and now what happens is because m2 is on and c2 is at vdd and c1 is at no value due to charge sharing c1 will get a value so initially the charge stored was zero but now slowly slowly the charge on c1 is getting higher and the stored value becomes one at that same point of time my data out is equal to vdd because this is pre-charged to vdd so this is nothing but my simple write one operation which we just saw before going to read one again i do make my pc equal to one that means my c2 and c3 will again go to vdd I'll make my word select zero. My read select is already zero. And that's all what I do. And rest of the things will hold or will save the same value which it was. Now, when I do read one, what's going to happen here is my read select goes high. That means this signal goes high. Word select goes low. Because read select has gone high, that really shows that this transistor will be off and this transistor would be on. Because one was stored here, M1 is also on. And C3 will start discharging towards zero because this is the closed path it gets a part to discharge m3 on m1 on that means d out which was initially at vdd now is lowering its value slowly but surely and going towards zero that is what we are seeing here that reflects that a one is written on c1 
at that point of time data bar was still zero no change and dean will stay to vdd now writing a zero again making your recharge equal to one and making your write and read signals both zeros in case anyone was high in the previous cycle which i have done here and rest all will hold their value as it is now to write a zero we know that we have to make our write signal equal to one which i have done at that time read signal is equal to zero which also is easily understood again m2 is on initially c2 was charged to vdd c1 is also charged in the previous write cycle because now we are writing zero that means data bar is one that will turn on this transistor and data in will go to zero and now the capacitors c2 and c1 both through m2 and this transistor nx have a part to discharge and that's the reason my data in is going towards zero that shows that my c1 and c2 both is getting the part to discharge to zero that means the charge stored on c1 is moving towards zero and at that point of time my d out is equal to p charge to vdd so when c1 loses its value we have written a zero and finally the final read zero operation again we make pc equal to one and write and read signals both zero and all others will stay at the same value read zero means read signal high so m3 is on m2 would be off now this was discharged to zero so this transistor is also off that means p3 d out or c3 was recharged to vdd now because only this is on it does not have a part to discharge because m1 is off and it will hold on to its value so d out is one so because d out is one here it is interpreted by the column circuitry as a zero showed on chart on capacitor c1 which is nothing but we are reading a zero on c1 so this completes an interesting explanation of a three transistor DRAM. I hope you have followed it and enjoyed it too. Stay tuned, take care and thank you very much.